Okay, installing a sub-panel is typically done by a licensed electrical contractor, a certified electrician, or a qualified individual. Um, due to the live electrical parts, it is not recommended for homeowners or unqualified people to attempt. Okay, in this video, we're at a job site uh, where we are in need of uh, a sub-panel run that goes out to another location on the property. And so we have to get a uh, circuit put into this main panel. Okay, we're opening up the main panel uh, to take a look and see what we're up against. Uh, we've got a really busy panel here, a lot of circuits. Um, so we're really checking out uh, to see if we have any space available in there at all for a full-size two-pole 240 volt um, breaker to serve another area and we're pretty full. Uh, it's a 200 amp panel that's existing here um, so we're going to have to really be careful. Uh, one of the things that uh, we will mention here is that this is a, a, a large project with a lot of uh, ongoing work that's being done. Uh, this adding this sub panel is going to be a temporary fix. Uh, the main panel is eventually going to be changed out to a full uh, 400 amp panel. And then they'll be able to reconfigure things. But for the time being, and because of the time allotment that we've got on the job, we've got to go ahead and install a sub panel to uh, feed this other location on the property. So we start taking some amperage checks to see um, what our loads are looking like and what... Um, what we can move around to make space for a uh, a two-pole breaker that's going to feed a sub-panel so that we can move circuits into the sub-panel on the left-hand side of this panel, which is where it's going to be located. And then we'll have space also to feed the new location of a new building that's being built on, on the property. So we're going to prepare our uh, rain tight screw can to uh, use to intercept and get into the wall be behind the, uh, the stucco wall here and just below the main panel. Uh, we've got a, uh, a thick stucco that we have to penetrate to get into the wall. So we've got to uh, make the uh, good size hole into this rain tight screw can. We're using our trusty good old uh, knockout punch set. Drill a hole through the back after we use our unibit to make a, a hole that's large enough for the main bolt for the, uh, the knockout. And um, then we just go ahead and get that hole knocked out and get that started. We have to repeat that process for all the other accesses that will be going into this rain tight screw can. And we just uh, keep repeating the process until we get everything set up the way we want it. Okay, you just want to remember to uh, really line things up properly. Uh, you have to take into consideration locations of conduits coming into this pole can, things going out, uh, bends on radiuses for the uh, PVC flex that we'll be using, PVC conduits coming in underneath, and your space underneath the panel, of course, you just want to uh, measure everything one at a time. Make sure you're getting your penetrations in a good spot. Uh, it's nice to space things out in your, your screw can so that you don't have a lot of openings that are lined up uh, with each other that could, could really cause crowded wire situations. You want to be able to bend your wires and make your splices uh, really nicely and, and not have a, a problem with... Uh, a big ball of wire inside there. Okay, we've made the uh, knockout for PVC pipe that is going out to underground to another location to feed another building. And now, so we're just going ahead and preparing for the, uh, the hole that we've got to cut in the side of the house for the, to go through the stucco to uh, get access into the wall to bring our cables in and out of the panel 
the main panel up above. So we're just going through the process of marking and getting ready to drill a series of holes that will help us to gain access. We're going to have to chip those holes away and uh, make the hole large enough so that we can get a hole saw bit in there to go through the plywood siding of the home before we actually get access into the wall. It's just a, a process of drilling holes, uh, chipping away. You can use a, uh, a drill bit, a masonry drill bit, to go ahead and enlarge your holes, as you see here, and to get that pulled out, you chip away with your good old trusty Klein's electrician's hammer <laughs> and screwdriver to knock out all the concrete over the stucco and then eventually get in there with a pair of pliers to cut the you know the chicken wire that might be in there for the stucco i'm using my my crimp pliers that i have i have a nice pointed uh, cutter at the end which allows me to get in there and cut the wire and actually pull out the piece of uh, concrete and then go ahead and get started with the hole saw bit to get in there and make a hole into the wall. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way things are lining up, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark the holes to actually anchor the uh, ring tight screw can to the wall and anchor that permanently so that w we can continue on with the rest of the connections with PVC going out to the sub panel that's going to be surface mounted on the wall. Okay, a few things that are not shown here that I want to enforce is that uh, there is sealant that we put behind the rain tag screw can between the wall and the, the can to prevent like a waterproof seal. And also there will be a snap ring insulated bushing that will be put into the knockout, that big four inch knockout, um, as it goes into the wall to protect the wiring that will be coming in and out of the wall. Okay, at this point we're preparing the other feed that leaves and goes underground so that it can be brought up into the rain tight screw can and then make its way into the main panel by way of another uh, SER cable, service entrance cable, that will be placed into the wall from the screw can into the, the panel. We're not going inside the wall with single conductors that are not protected. That is just not the right thing to do. So we're going to be making a splice into the screw can for that feed going out. Okay, now we're finally to the point to where we can uh, get our sub panel set, anchored to the wall to the left of the main panel. So we'll be, uh, we made a penetration at the bottom. We're gonna be connecting the sub panel to the rain tight screw can uh, by way of using a PVC flex. I find that very helpful. Uh, you're not, you could use a solid uh, sweep if you wanted to, a PVC 90 or uh, EMT if you wanted to. I like using the PVC Flex and uh, just uh, measure that, get that in place, get it ready to be glued, and then uh, make your, uh, your penetration holes for putting a strap to keep it in place, and you're good to go. Okay, now with the uh, sub-panel that's mounted to the wall, going ahead and bonding the ground bar to the enclosure to the frame of the panel, uh, making sure that the neutral and the ground are separate. This is a four wire system, so the neutral and the ground are separate. That's only, those are only bonded together at the uh, main panel. And we're getting this uh, ready to feed it. We're feeding it with the uh, cables from the main panel by way of the PVC flex, and then going back up into the wall with protected cable and into the main panel. Okay, one thing that we should be mentioning here too is that we are not splicing in the main panel uh, for the circuits that are being removed so that we can make space in the main panel. They're being brought down into the uh, rain tight screw can or the other uh, pull box that is there and we'll be making our splices in there. If our wire is long enough, uh, we can pull it down the wall and out of the main panel uh, and bring it into the new panel. That would be great, but in most cases, you have to make a splice in a, in a splice box, pull can, gutter, whatever you're going to have 
but we're also taking a look at some of the existing wiring that is inside the panel. We can see that there's uh, a few problems that we're going to have to contend with. And again, I want to reiterate that um, this is an ongoing project. There's going to be a lot of changes and additions in uh, the home and with this uh, the new panel that's going to be set. We're going to be able to alleviate a lot of problems. Okay, this is showing the type of splice that we've made inside the uh, ring tight screw can for the underground wire that is going out to uh, another area of the, of the location at the uh, property. We're also looking at uh, cleaning up things inside the panel. We're, we've swung over a couple of circuits now from the main panel into the new sub panel. That's looking really nice. I like the way things are cleaning up and we're just checking some of the connections and getting close to being at the end of this project. Okay, we've buttoned everything up. We're just taking a look at it. I like the way it looks. It's a pretty clean installation, not bad for a surface mounted sub panel. But we've accomplished a couple of things. We fed the uh, other building out on the property. We've uh, swung over some circuits from the main panel to make room for two full size circuit breakers. But we look forward to upgrading this panel to a 400 amp panel in the near future. And that's how that shaped up. We're happy with it. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Come on by the website, asktheelectrician.com. Pick up a free um, ebook, newsletter, subscription, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. All right, guys, thanks very much.